If I were you, I would not leave this place tonight until everything that God has for us is delivered in general and specifically for you. You receive it. Amen? Amen? We, had, we have a ministry partner when we came in 2015, I think it was, or 14, we ministered together here. He came from England. He's an African. Uh, Dr. Shadrach, he says, last nights are dangerous. Tell your neighbor that for me. Last nights are dangerous. Good. And last night was a dangerous night. The night before and the night before. Can you imagine five services? Four have passed and this is the fifth one. Isn't that something? And the main reason I don't want you leaving here tonight before this is done is that last, last year when I came to celebrate, I was invited to be the preacher for the 60th birthday of your apostle. I remember, well, he, I was reminded just now there that I prophesied to Pastor Sandra that when we come again, we will consecrate her as an apostle. Amen. And uh, all last night we just Discussing that, but we didn't remember. And as Apostle Stephen told me, he, he saw the prophecy today. And he knew by confirmation that this is the day for it. Amen. In fact, I, I, would, I would think that this it being done on the actual 20th anniversary is the signature reason that God is talking about shifting. Because she standing next to her husband will now be shifted into the same office as he has. I, I really want to understand the significance of that. Uh, the book I wrote there called The Kiva blows out of the water to smithereens. The doctrine that says a woman not supposed to be a leader in the church. It's a lie straight down from hell, the hottest part. Why? Why? Because God never said so. How do I know God never said so? Because he never said so. <laughs> you see, you got to understand, if you, if you are truly, uh, 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 how, how, how they call it, analytical in how you read the scripture, you must know that a lot of scripture was given by God. All scripture was given by God, as Paul says, but influenced in its writing by culture. It's important. And we in the Caribbean and the western side of the Atlantic have allowed our clear thinking to be shrouded by Jewish culture. Jewish culture even now, still has the woman a second class. In fact, third class. Because her sons come before her in the hierarchy of inheritance. And in fact, at any rate, the Jews originally never accepted Jesus anyway. Who came to restore what Adam enjoyed. And may I tell you, Adam is not male. Go into Genesis chapter 5, and you'll see that God, 
when he was giving the history of Adam, Moses is writing. He told Moses to write this. Male and female created he them and called them Adam. Go and check it yourself. Bring up that verse for me, please. Because some people think I'm storying. Bring it up for me. Genesis chapter 5, somewhere around, as it's giving the history of, of, of Adam. I want you to see it for yourself. You didn't think it was in the Bible. Because it is a summarization of what God did in Genesis chapter 1. When God created man, he created Zachar and Nakiva. And one of the books that Apostle Gemma just talk, spoke about, God had me write this. He said, I want you to write this to liberate my daughters in the kingdom. He said, because... I never intended for the woman to be second class in the body of Christ. The true church of Jesus Christ puts the woman standing in the same space. Different function. And that's where people get problem. We put status to function. And if somebody is not functioning in a particular spot, they have no status. But I always draw the analogy. As, as, as high profile as a doctor is, as high profile as the prime minister, your prime minister is, as high profile as uh, whoever else is. Let the garbage men stop taking up garbage for a month. Who everybody classifies, in fact, you, you don't even have a classification for them. They're just sanitary workers. Let that happen, and you will see what will happen in the prime minister's residence, in the doctor's office. Rats don't know the difference between you and your status. And what has happened, we have caused the, the function of the man based on Jewish thinking in fact, not just Jews, Middle Eastern and Far East thinking. It's only in the Caribbean that women, Caribbean and Americas, that women have gotten a chance to stand in leadership. In those other places, even in Israel, when Golda Meir was prime minister, she got very little respect from the men in the Knesset. And you know what has happened with the church? Not the one of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ has put everybody on equal footing. Different function. Don't let function create status and mess up your mind so you can't take instructions from somebody who you don't see having status. But hear this. Paul, the Apostle Paul, set up a church in a city called Galatia. <laughs> Hence the church is called the Galatians. He wrote a book to them when he heard what was happening. That was the only Gentile church in which Paul removed all Jewish rituals. He refused to have them keep the Sabbath, have them observe new moons, have them circumcise the men. He refused to have the masters in the front and the slaves in the back. He refused to have the men in front and the women behind. He refused to have Gentiles sitting somewhere else from Jews. He set up the Galatian church as a star church, not the Corinthians, the Galatians, or else he would not have been so shocked when he got the news from them. And what was the news? In chapter 3, he found out something, that the doctrine he had given them to follow had now become corrupted by Jews who had come down from Judea and infiltrated the church with their doctrine. And you read it for yourself. Chapter 3, verse 1, Paul asked the question, who has bewitched you? And I talked about witchcraft. Who has bewitched you? 
And you would have thought he was thinking that who came riding on a broom and hexed you. He, you would have thought he would say, who, who came from the cemetery with cemetery dust and say, Whee! take it. No. When you begin to look at the details, you'll realize the first question he asked them, a kind of rhetorical question because they knew the answer. He said, wait, you began in truth and now you're living in error? Who has bewitched you? And then he made a statement. He said, listen to me. If I or an angel come, and teaches you anything different from what I gave you as your basic doctrine. Chase us. Call us infidels. And then he summarized the three major areas that were being bombarded by wrong doctrine. What was that? He says, for in God, there is no Jew, nor Greek. What was he dealing with there? The race problem. And do you know those are the three major problems? That one and two others I'll point out are the three major problems in society today. Race. And race here, I, I, I rather use the term ethnicity. Because there are different grades of every ethnic group. Depending on your, the shade of your color, even if you're African, you with the high color, you're higher than everybody else. And it has infiltrated church. And, and, and you know what's so bad about it? Those of the darkest color like me, actually have accepted the fact that I'm supposed to stay back. If I'm black, stay back. Which God made you? Not the same one that made them? But again, colonialism, I wouldn't have time to deal with colonialism. Sometime again when we come, we'll talk about the impact of colonialism. Colonialism, the accent is on colon. We have left, been left messed up. The colon only keeps the mess but extracts all the good stuff and gives it to the body. That's how the, 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 the uh, metropolitan countries, especially the Europeans, those in the northern part of Europe, that's how they became so great. They came to the Caribbean, introduced to the Caribbean by a guy called Christopher Columbus, who, by the way, his Spanish name was Cristobal Colon. Colon. He started the colonial system in the West. And they, they built up their cities, London, Manchester, Paris, and, and, and where, where else? The Hague, all those places, capital of those countries, with sweat and blood from the Caribbean. If we had the time tonight, I'll go into that, how they, they, the one thing they brought that held the slaves... <laughs> In check was their religion. And in their religion, they classified all dark-skinned people as non-entities. In fact, from, Amer from the United States, go right down to Chile. When a church was going on, all the slaves who came with their masters had to sit in the back. If they got a seat. The God I serve, he made man, black, white, green, and all the colors in between. He made man. And if you regard yourself as a hue, man, then he made you. And whatever he has going for man, you should receive it. Come on, give God a praise. And don't just settle for you being deprived of it. Oh, well, maybe that's the doctrine we have. If you are in a church, ladies, I'm talking to you right now. If you are in any ministry and that part of the doctrine of that ministry is that women must not lead, you need to get out of there. 
That's not God's church. That's a man's religion. And it is tailor-made to strangulate you. Oh boy, every corner turn I'm seeing the angel that follows me. Lift your right hand up. Tonight is going to be crazy. There's an angel in the house. Mm. And God showed me any time that angel comes, he brings a squad with him. One for each person. Mm. So right where you are, right where you are sitting right now, there's an angel assigned to you. And I hear God saying, it's for understanding, first of all. He said, I want you to understand my ways. I am your God and I want you to understand my ways. And don't let erroneous doctrines block you from the blessing I have for you. Because I made you for my purpose. It doesn't matter to me whether you are a male worshiper or a female worshiper. I receive your worship from your heart. That's why I've responded tonight in the midst of that young lady singing. The first angel showed up right next to me here, right where I was sitting here. God said, I responded, you called the name of my son Jesus. He says, so I've come down. I've come down. And I'm going to shower you with my blessing. But I want you to understand what I am and what I am doing. Karabashanda. Somebody say, Lord, shift my mind. Help me to recognize the angelic presence that's next to me here today. Mm, 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 mm. And the Lord, the Lord told us a long time ago, anytime that angel shows up in church, lift your hand and praise him. So right now, lift your hand and give God some praise out of your spirit. Hallelujah. That angel represents the awesomeness and the awesome authority of God. Wherever angels show up, they are bringing heaven. I said they are bringing heaven to bear on matters. And he doesn't just come to, to stand there. He comes with an assignment for each of us. First of all, to crack open our minds. And once he gets our minds focused on God, he says, then there's a channel of my anointing. Mm. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. So we continue. So he says, get rid of that race agenda. Because with God, there is no Jew, no Greek. Then he says, with God, there is no bond, no free. That's the class agenda. That's what's messing up the world today. It's messing up Barbados. It's messing up Trinidad. It's, and funny, it's messing up the thing called the church. Which is not Jesus' church. You look at what happened on the day of Pentecost. Who preached? The lowest class person. A fisherman. There were other intelligent people there. Matthew was there. He's an accountant. Why did God didn't give him the, 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 the authority to, to, to use his, 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 his analytical mind? No. Holy Spirit came down on whoever Holy Spirit chooses to. Leave your right hand up. I prophesy Holy Spirit will come upon you because you choose to worship God. You choose to accept him. You choose to follow his agenda. Say, Lord, I receive you. And then Paul says, so he says, there is no, what, Jew, no Greek. Jew stands for the people who are, quote unquote, God's chosen people. Greek stands for anybody who is not a Jew. 
a Gentile. That's why it, it irks me in the Caribbean again to see how many of us in the Caribbean are want to be Jews. We follow all their feasts. We dress like them. We can't pray unless we have the blue cloth. No, it's white cloth with the blue. Not even understanding the function of that cover. It's if you could not get to the temple or the synagogue which represented the place you met with God, you put that on, on in your house or on that tree or wherever to pray. Because it it's represents the tent. No, God is not really concerned about the building. If I had time, part of the 20 revelation is that our bodies are the temple of the living God. Because the tabernacle and the temple represented Jesus in his fullness of ministry and personality and power. The tabernacle had 20. In the wall around the tabernacle, it was square. There were 80 pillars. 20 each on the sides. with skin between them, representing the outer body. Do you know inside the, 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 the holy place where all the priests did their service, the service of sacrifice, the service of redemption, and all of that, do you know there were 20 boards on the west and on the east? And joining those boards were five pillars the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher. Do you know they were doing within that enclosure the work that Jesus came to do? Shed his blood because they used to kill the animals inside there. So, so, so I want us to catch this. When, when, when God called Abraham and told him, your people go be my the blessed people eh? because, you're, because you have wholly followed me. He didn't stop there. And he said, Every nation of the earth going to be blessed because of you. But he never said every nation in the earth will follow your culture and religion. Or as Jesus' birth was a waste of time and his death was even bigger than that. Because John said in John chapter 1 verse 12, he came unto his own. And his own received him not. His own received him not. But we want to do what his own did. This is the last night I told you it's dangerous for your doctrine. But we're flying out. I will not appear in this house again on this trip. And listen to me, my angel, he knows how to block stones. I'm feeling some big stone coming at me. But I don't care because I know God called me to correct doctrine in his house. Wherever I travel, listen to me. The, I, I tell pastors, you don't have to feel burdened. You bring me in once, I mess up the thing, you don't have to bring me back again. You clean it yourself. So watch this. The Jews had a practice of once you get in to the space called the temple, Non-Jews couldn't go inside. Gentiles had to remain outside. Women had to remain somewhere further. We say that church. And we are backing up what Paul says. A woman should be silent in church. And taking that cultural practice and bringing it into a place where Jesus died for all to forgive all and to position all. So I always ask the question, what kind of God is our God? Who has a church that is made up of in any given assembly more than 60% of the 
people present are females. Some cases have more than that. And you are telling me this God who is saving all of them, all of us, is saying, please keep those women silent. You could imagine if on Sunday coming, all the women come with duct tape on their mouth. As soon as you get there, the usher say, okay, today you're not supposed to say anything. You know what's going to happen to worship? Because the average man worshiping and, and he, he, yeah, yeah, he, he, he watches his wife on the side and she's reaching. I love the name, the name of Jesus. And suddenly she feels it and she goes, she go, hush, Brunde. Watch him. So if the woman stopped, Coming to church with a free mouth. We in trouble, you know? Well, I want you to know, still in Jewish synagogues, the women have to take back seat. But we want to be Jews. And I, I'm attacking that because I know when tonight we lay hands on this woman, we put an anointing upon her, and she moves into the same office as her husband, there are many people here who will not be able to take it. And God tell me before you do it, teach it. So at least you have a better than even chance to make a qualified decision. I don't wait for nobody to come to tell me it's time for Apostle Jevon to be a pastor. I am there getting ready to travel and as, as I've been doing before, I've been doing before, looking for a list of pastors I could invite to preach while I'm not there. And then the Lord asked me, why are you looking for pastors when I gave you one? I said, you gave me one? He said, yeah, look on the bed there. Get some oil. Anoint her. And I anointed her right there as pastor. Of course, she and God had some little... Um, Words, words. But God didn't take her on. Then, when the time came, the Lord says, elevate her to apostle now. I didn't even go and ask my brother. I told him, come to the consecration. Because God told me, there's nobody else to endorse her like you can. So, we, we, and that night, we had big stuff. We took our two sons and consecrated them as prophets. Listen to me. When God is in that thing, he will bless it. And we can tell you the change, the shift in the flow of anointing, both in her personally and in divine destiny. All those from divine destiny, come on. They can tell you. A shift. Now I could travel freely when I have to go by myself. And know at home, <laughs> sometimes I, I, you think I, I do long. I do long. Listen to me. Sometimes I reach back in the hotel and I get in text. Service still going on in Trinidad. <laughs> and I'm not preaching. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say who preaching, but I would. Then comes one of the most volatile contradictions. He says, with God, there is no, what? Jew nor Greek, no, bond nor free. So he deals with a race problem. He deals with a class problem. And then he attacks the gender problem. This is the same Paul who says women should shut up. He corrected his doctrine. Oh, yes. He allowed culture to lock him down. But when he was setting up the church in Galatia, Holy Spirit told him, get rid of all those cultural inhibitions. And he says, with God, there is no male nor female. And then 
quickly before somebody could think. He says what? He says, because with God in the Lord, all of us are one. Look how we're helping out so many men here tonight. Because you've been having serious problems with your, with your wife leading and your wife being able to, to understand God at a higher level than you. It's simply because you yourself have not taken up your position as leader. If she's outstripping you, then you have some makeup to do. But she's not out of place. She's in her place. You need to get into place. Come on, give God a praise. And I'm taking my tie because I don't want to sweat my nice suit because when I take picture with, uh, when I take my photo, I don't want to look wet. Okay. You know, uh, all the other nights, I already walk from so to so long time, but I stay in center. So hear this. Why I am so adamant on the fact that God never made that classification, but it was a cultural influence on the writers, even from Genesis chapter 3, is that from Genesis 3 to Revelation 22, is God's attempt to bring correction and to bring restoration to Genesis 1 and 2. Genesis 1 and 2 represent the ideal of how God wanted the earth. You read it well. He fixes earth by speaking. That's why when, uh, oh, 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 right. There's, there's an observation I made, and I want, you, I want you to take it in good spirit. Not everybody who gets this mic to prophesy, given permission by your apostles, has a loud enough voice to drown out your amen and hallelujah. Or the music. Therefore, when somebody picks up this mic to prophesy, is God speaking to all of us through a vessel. And if he's speaking to us, there is absolutely no way if somebody is speaking to you, you shout back at them. That's why you need to be as quiet as possible to let the word enter. When that person is finished, then you could shout and clap. Because, listen to me, listen to me. Anybody here who is truthful will tell you, lots of time, over a month, God repeats the same prophecy by different people. You know why we didn't hear it the first time, second time, third time, fourth time? Because we shouted. And we have to calm down, listen. Because one of the, one of the devices of the enemy is robbing you of the word that will bring faith. Because faith commit by what? And hearing by the what? If you truly believe when the prophet, whoever is prophesying, stands up to prophesy, it is God's word, then your faith is being fed. But if you are not hearing it, then you will not build faith. So I, want, I, I, I thought I would share that with you tonight because this is a prophetic house. Tell your neighbor, this is a prophetic house. God will back up his word to perform it. But I must have it inside of me so that I could live it out when he strengthens me in a situation that is tailor-made for that word that was spoken. Right. So hear this. Paul says, we all are one in God. So wherever a male man can go, 
a female man can go. Because God never called her woman. The book says it. I read it myself. And it, God says, let's make him a help. In the, uh, in the Amplified, it says a helper. So if people make a compound word out of help meet, tell me if you could say helper meet. Why? Because when Adam said, when Adam said the rationale for naming the new body of flesh that looked like him, because all other bodies of flesh had no resemblance to him. He got so excited, he called her what? Woman. He did not call her helper. And from the moment he called her woman, and I want you to know, everything that's ever created has a rationale for it being made. And it's the rationale that determines its use. Anytime you go beyond the rationale for a particular item, you begin to abuse it. Because abuse is abnormal use. Use contrary to the rational that sets the standard for using it. So when Adam said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, he left out a very important element called what? Spirit. Because they were made spirit before they were made flesh. When God decided we're going to make Man in our own likeness. And in our own image. It's way down in John chapter 4 that Jesus really uh, 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 opens up the mystery of what's God's likeness and God's images. When he said to the woman at the well, God is a spirit. God is a... Therefore, the first dimension of any creature that's made in God's likeness, and it's only man and woman that's made in God's likeness, the first dimension is spirit. Are you hearing me? And that is why, that is why the, 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 the mandate God gave to, to man to what? To govern the land, govern the earth, and to what? Have dominion over the animals. Man could not carry it out in his spirit form. Because spirit cannot communicate with flesh. And that's why it's so difficult with us made up of flesh and spirit to flow with God because flesh shuts down spirit because flesh will not allow spirit to order it around because flesh feel he is boss. And that's why God in his, in his, in his uh, exquisite uh, drafting of the human body, he tucks away spirit so deep inside the flesh that your hands can't touch him. And once you get saved and spirit is awakened and let loose, you keep doing the worship. You keep doing whatever God asks you to do. And watch how spirit now begins to control you. And that's why a lot of people don't want to go too deep in this thing. Because you can't have your own way anymore. And if you try to have it at all, you end up with a headache. And another spirit begins to control you and you have to come in front here, bring a bucket, bring a bag. I'm not ridiculing anybody. I'm telling you what the facts are. Oh, I'm beginning to sweat. Okay. So hear this. God made Zakar, which means the male man, with the pointed instrument. 
competent to worship. I don't have to read and spell for you, but I'll just spell. Pointed instrument in the male man is his penis. I can say that here, right? Right, good. Well, I said already. Penis. And his penis is made to worship. Because the word worship means to become one with. That's why the essence of true worship is that we cannot stop worshiping until God is formed in us. And it does not have to be confined to the time we have the music worship. When he is preaching, she is preaching, worship still continues. And many times it's in the word that the union comes. But the, 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 the music part of the worship, what it did, it bulldozed our souls waiting for the seed. And that's why worship leaders cannot just be good singers. They have to know to mix the word and the music. Preparing for him, preparing for her, or whoever else is going to preach. Are you hearing me? You cannot just be a singer of songs and you don't know the scriptures from where the songs came. And you could drive a song even deeper into the atmosphere of the ministry. By what? Taking the scripture, looking for the scripture base on which this thing is built. Look, that's not the last song we sang. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet. Somewhere in the middle of that song, when the beginning of that song, the song leader should have pulled the book called Joshua. And look at how God dealt with a wall around a city. It would bring a greater understanding. And then time we sing it again, sometimes we just get flawed. Because once you get to understand, tell your neighbor, understand. You know why this roof is not coming down on us? It's supported by what? And what? What are they? Beams and what? Pillars. And, and some, what do what, what they call them? Purlings. Remove the beams and pillars and the roof will fall on us. But where are the beams and pillars located in relation to the roof? They are what? They are what? And what are they doing? Lying or standing? So they are standing under, right? Or shift the, pro, shift the preposition and you say they are under standing. They are what? But what are they providing? Support. They're providing what? Support. Which tells me then anything that I know understands. I'm prepared to do what? Support it. Come give God a praise, that man, for my English. We listen. I, I don't let the colonials tell me what to do to understand. And that's why people who make pronouncement on what they don't understand confuse other people. Because the worst thing to do is pronounce on something over which you only have a speculation. Speculation leads to incorrect conclusion. Incorrect conclusion make you make pronouncements or take action that's erroneous. That's why sometimes it's better you shut up and stay where you are until you understand. And the word understand in, 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 in the law on marriage in Ephesians chapter 5 is rendered as submit. As what? As what? But, but, but understand also means once it's under, it's supporting. Huh? So I'm throwing out this for all the ladies who are afraid to get married because you let no man walk all over you because me submitted to no man. 
The Bible never said, and ye wives, let your husband put his size 22 on your face. Never said that. It said what? Submit. But submit, does, it's not a position of weakness. Submit is about understanding or supporting. Because the word, the word submit is, is, is a pain to all women and it's a strengthening tablet, tonic to all men. I go, I go make sure she submit. You could never submit to anybody. The only thing you could submit is an inanimate object, like a plan or an idea, but you can't submit people. That's why, the, that's why if you understand law, in fact, I, I, let me drive it a little further. There's a special offering. I'm taking a special offering. Our, our, um, our, and if it was last week, so I'm taking an offering for the year. Because 43 years, I've learned how to support. And she has learned how to support. In the early days, kicking and screaming. I mean me, 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 me. me. Kicking and screaming. Mm. Vivian, walk away. Go this side. Good. No, but seriously speaking, do you know the man has more reason to submit than a woman? Can I show you? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me. There's a very inquisitive section. I could hear them tell us a person. Okay, I'll tell you. Do you realize, first of all, for the female, she only has three verses. Go read yourself. That addresses her situation. Do you know for the male, there are eight verses. Numerically speaking alone, mathematically speaking alone, there's a heavier load on the man. But here, here where the real weight is, it says, you husbands love your wives even as. The word even as is a, is a metaphor for equality in weight. And importance. You go to the market, you don't let nobody tip the scale and then tell you how many pounds it is. You wait until it settles. So he said, I want, I want you, I want you, you, you guys, I want you to love your wives. Settling the scales just like Jesus did it. And he didn't stop there and gave himself for it. Is there any man here ready to die for his wife? Tonight you're going home and you're hearing, you're hearing on the gate the rattling and somebody jump over and they're knocking the door. I hope you're not the one that say, girl, girl, take this hammer. Bust the head when you see it. It says, even as Christ loved the church and what? Gave himself and died. Did Jesus just walk up to Calvary and say, yo, yo I'm the guy that the angels sang about and Gabriel told my mother about. Nail me. No. He had first to be put behind the Gethsemane gate. If you do ho no horse racing down in the garrison, there are gates. They don't just tell the horses run. No, there are gates. And the jockeys are number one, number two, number three, number four. Any jockey that runs out that gate before the, the race master ring the bell or, or opens the gate, he and the horse disqualify. Anyone that stays in the back when the others have gone behind a closed gate, you're disqualified. So Jesus was behind a closed gate called the Gethsemane gate. He could not move until he and the father had straightened out some matters. How did he get out the gate? He submitted. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. In one word, he submitted. But his submission has built into it, given his life. For the woman, God said, just support your husband. And even when man and woman going out, and then fellas by garrison, 
have the pit bull, and the pit bull get away from one and they run into both of you down, you can not climb up one of those Barbados pride trees and say, run, girl, run! You have to stand up and tell her, you run, girl, and, and when the pit bull comes, So I just thought I'll throw in that there for all married people and want to be married people. It will help you out. But, but, but I'm driving to something. Then he made Nakiva. He made Zachar and Nakiva together. Nakiva is the man with the receptacle. Talking about a woman's vagina. And if you look Anybody who married here already, you realize how the two things fit like oil fit in water, boy. That's why anybody who has any other passion for sex, they're out of line. Because no zakar has one for a zakar. And no nakiva has the thing that the next Nakiva need. Nobody can charge me because I'm only saying Zakar Nakiva. <laughs> the implications may be deep, but, but if they take me to court, I'll tell them straight up. I never said mm and mm. I said, Zachar and Nakiva. You thought I would say it? Eh? <laughs> so God made them. Zachar, the man with the pointed instrument, competent to worship. Nakiva, the, the female, female man with the receptacle, competent to worship. And the next verse says, so God blessed them. And it seems as though it was simultaneously, positionally. I don't see where he told uh, 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 Zachar, step forward. Nakiva, go hide behind that tree. I'm about to talk to this male here. No, it says, and he blessed them. Up to that time, blessing had nothing to do with material stuff. Because they were spirit. Spirit don't need house. Spirit don't need car. Spirit don't need a job. Spirit is spirit. So when God blessed them in spirit form, what he was doing was transferring his authority, transferring his power, setting up a frequency by which the male and the female, Zachary and Akiva, in the earth could perform on God's behalf with God's authority and power what he would have done if he had come down to the earth to do it himself. Come, somebody give God a praise now. He blessed them together. Or he empowered them together. Or he brought both of them on his frequency together. Or he began to broadcast both of them together. Different function. Because the physiology alone of the male tells you straight up. He has a different function in the worship session. To the female. And vice versa. Yet it takes both of them to produce and reproduce. And let me... Let me take it a little further. And procreate what God wants done in the earth. 
That's why it's amazing how the Zacharias and them want to have children. To mine. And Nakiva and them want to have children to mine. And both of them can't impregnate either. It's amazing. That's why God burned a whole city, boy. In fact, a twin city, Sodom and Gomorrah, burned them. Watch this. So there he is, God. He has himself in the earth in two dimensions. His male dimension and his female dimension. Oh, good apostle, that's sacrilege. You're saying God is female? Well, why is his name El Shaddai? And he has more breasts than all of you. He is the many breasted one. He has plenty breasts. God. Yet he wields a mean sword as a warrior. You see, you gotta, you gotta expand your mind and understand what God intended from the beginning. He intended that male and female will stand next to each other and function. Different function. But same purpose. Tell your neighbor, purpose is greater than function. And say, neighbor, it's when you understand purpose that you truly begin to function. If you think to get a position in this church is to get yourself bigged up, there's a word big, whatever. Bigged up for photo ops, then you would not last too long. Because, because to get into any position in any church, you have to be functioning. And it's your function and your determined determination to function is to stay in, in place when other sheep trying to bump you out. How to follow the shepherd when other sheep bumping into you to get you out. When you know why you said yes when they ask you to do whatever you say you will do. Ain't got nobody to move you. Come and give God a praise for me. So yeah, this, yeah, this. God looks at man, male and female. He looks at Adam, Zachary and the Kiva. No, we know them as Adam and Eve. And he looks at their inability to function, having dominion over the earth. Why? Because the earth, everything that was earth was made from dirt. Different molecular structure, but same story. Get them rotting and they will end up as dirt. Even iron. Left in the out, outside, give it about 50 years and it's back to dirt. Are we understanding that? So, so what, what, what did God do? God says, spirit can't really control molecular structures like that. Uh, uh, trees and rivers and so on. So he says what? I'm going to make man now in the flesh. I'm going to take man's spirit and put it in flesh so that man has a connectivity now between his spirit and what's his portfolio for keeping the earth under order. But hear what God did. What God did, if you read Nakiva, when we say, uh, and, 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 and I don't know if Moses put it like that, but whoever translated it into the King James said this, and, and, and God made man and blew into him out of the dust of the ground, and blew into him the breath of life. But that's not the original language. You go and ask Uncle Google, put it in there, and ask, what's the original word for breath of life? 
It's a word, Shain. C-H-A-Y-I-N. I'm not a Jew, so I can't say it like how they say. Good. I almost said it, boy. Shain, which means the breath of lives. Hear the funny thing? The funny thing is that God builds out of the ground a body of flesh on the male platform. And blew into the body of flesh that was on the male platform the two lives. Zachar and Nekiva. But the male body could only give expression to the male spirit. And that is why by the time you get to chapter 2, somewhere down verse uh, 16, something around there, uh, God watches the male man saddled with Zachar and Akiva inside of him. Trying to do the job he was given. Which was what? To keep or guard the garden and to dress it. What happened then? He says, it is not good. And that's the King James. Go into the Amplified. And there are four words used where the, the, um, King, where the King James uses one. It is not good for man to be alone. Check the Amplified. It says it is not satisfactory for man to be alone. But the word alone was translated erroneously because the original word is E-T-S-E-M, etsm, which means... All in one. It is not good for man, the body of flesh, to have two spirits fighting for expression when it's only built for the male to have expression. So hear what he says now. I will make him a helper. That's amplified. King James says help. And we quickly turn help and meet into a compound word. It never said that. It says a helper. Meet to his need. You have to take a little breath. A helper. Meet to his need. Or you could put that between there. That meet his need. And you know what the Amplified says meat has? Meat is, that is suitable, satisfactory, complementary, and completing him. Apostle Gemma did a message with, uh, a series with the woman at church, and, and she had them saying, my name is, and I have come to help you. Because that's your job. I have come to help my husband. Well, he's man, lay to yourself. Well, no, hello. God said, you must help. That's why you cannot go into a marriage helpless. Are you hearing me? God says you must help. God never says I'll make him a woman. He says, I'll make him a helper. Meet or satisfactory, complimentary, completing him. That is why you cannot, ladies, you cannot marry out of desperation. Any do-do will do. No. Because the only person who needs help is one who is actively pursuing purpose. But could not function 
fully on his own. The little boy at school comes home and he brings the, the report card. And when you look at the report card, maths unsatisfactory, English unsatisfactory, social studies unsatisfactory. What does he need? Help. So whole holidays from July until the first of September, boy, he going lessons, boy. He needs help. So God says, <laughs> uh, in keeping the garden, unsatisfactory. In dressing the garden, totally unsatisfactory. Because to dress the garden, he needed an eye for beauty. And most women have that. And I'm careful to say most women. Because I see some women blending some colors too. And I'm, hey, Brother Island, I'm talking about from the hair, go right up to the toe. Nothing matching. Hair green, shirt red, pants somewhere between yellow and dirty. Uh, toenails have a host of different colors. Nothing matching from head to toe. So don't blame us men only. And not all of us men get our wives to buy our clothes. We go for ourselves. Because me, to buy clothes, I know what I'm looking for. I already chose the, the color of the, uh, the suit, so I know what to blend with. So I walk in the store, and I take this. Boy, well, long before they had cell phones, when I go shopping with Nakiva, I didn't call no name. <laughs> Nakiva. First thing I used to do is look for where they're selling up newspapers. And I want a thick one. I locate where the change room is. Because I know just now I'm going to hear, Manuel, how this looking? <laughs> and I know I'll be there for at least three hours. But then God says, son, it's not good for you to be alone. So, so. I, I really want us to catch them. I'm driving for a case of this woman standing right next to this man and both of them operating the same office, different function, different levels of responsibilities because ultimately the responsibility for anything in the house will be on his head. But when it comes to function by way of anointing, even if he's not a wrong, she's going to have it. Come, somebody give God a praise in the man. But look at Adam's problem. God puts Adam to sleep. And then what? Opens up his side. Opens up his side. Takes a bone out of his ribs. Rib cage. And builds. Tell a neighbor you never went back to the dirt. Tell another neighbor for me, never went back to dirt. So, 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 the man around here who thinks that woman is dirt. I is the man in the house. And I go, put my foot on you. You're not saved and you're going straight to hell. Unless you change. Because home not supposed to be a hellish experience. You are not the devil. You are not Satan. And if you are making hell for your wife and the children, you need to come to the altar and get them demons cast out. Because culture and erroneous culture seem to have educated you more than God and his word. That you must keep woman under control. The girl trouble, voodoo. Two kick of cough and a boot, poop. 
buy. That is, if you're a woman, it's not a true Nakiru. <laughs> I know better than that. <laughs> That's why, ladies, you need to build up some stuff. Yes, I know you like your hourglass thing, but practice this. Get the nice chisel here, but hey, woo, 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 woo. And then as we tell men anyway, most times you sleep in before your wife. Bad men mustn't sleep. Oh no, my, 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 my sister is a nurse and she told us of an uh, an experience they had in the San Fernando Hospital. This man beat his wife and gone sleeping. And she knew he didn't sleep long and snow. She boiled a pot with pepper. Then she put oil in it. And then she walked into the bedroom and made sure she knew, he knew who it was that was about to pepper him. And she called him and as he opened his eyes, whoosh. She said everywhere the pepper seed landed, it burnt a hole. Because it became acidic. It was converted to acid by the heat. She said another one, same hospital, he beat up the wife and then he come for a kiss. Well, he, he did, she did kiss. It's once, kiss twice. And then she don't know what happened. He don't know what happened. But his upper lip ended between his 32. And she held on for dear life until he ended up with a permanent smile. Wrong doctrine. Woman is not for kicking and beating, but are driving you here. Here comes God as he's wont to do when he comes down in the earth to Yada or Koinonia to become one with man. Because every time he would come down, spiritual osmosis will take place. Everybody knows what osmosis is. If you have one body of water or two bodies of water and one is, has a high concentration of salt or sugar or whatever and there's a thin membrane, porous membrane between the both within a short while, once you move the film within a half an hour to an hour, depending on how, how concentrated it, 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 it is, the one that has no salt will become just as salty. Osmosis. Well, God has all that we need. And that's why you, you don't stop worship until you reach a climax. I mean, I tell you, the, 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 the original word that translates no is the same one that translates worship. And the original meaning of no is to have intercourse. That's why Adam knew Eve since in the garden. But it's only when they were thrown out of the garden, the scripture said, Adam knew Eve and she conceived. In other words, they finally went beyond just coupling up to now creating. I want, I want to catch that. And that's why worship that takes us to the point where we become one with God causes a pregnancy. Conception takes place. You come out of that worship with another function, with another passion, another purpose for coming into your union with God. And that's why Daniel says, you got to get to know God. So what he says, the people that continuously have intercourse with God or get to know God, they are the ones that will be what? That's why people who arrive for service after the worship, 
could never get pregnant in the spirit. You could hear how much word you want. You have not been lubricated for the word. That's why I showed you that thing on Sunday. Which slice belongs to God? The chunkiest one? The smallest one of the pizza? And that's why you'll watch other people who are giving God more than a slice. They give God their whole life. Going much further, faster than you do. Don't get jealous of them. They have come to understand you never get all from God if you're only giving God a little piece of yourself. But here the critical part. Adam, the male, is put to sleep. God opens up the side. And what happens? He takes the rib he took from the man. He did not go back to the dirt. Say that again for me. He did not go back to the dirt. And he built a framework, a skeleton, and a body. That's why all those um, scientists who don't believe in God and they want to do cloning, they don't realize God was the first cloner. W what's cloning? You take a piece of the, 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 the host's life or body and you build cells out of that. Are we understanding that? So, so I, can't, I can't see how uh, those who are into science don't believe in God. Our son wrote a book called, um, has something to do with science. What's the name again? Faith Science. Anytime you come around and we have that book, you need to get it. Because he, he is a scientist. But I want to drive this coming to a close here. Ask your neighbor, how many times he said coming to a close here? Tell, tell, him, tell the neighbor once, he just said it. Tell the neighbor he has about seven closings. And this is closing number one. So hear this. Here comes God as he's wont to do when he comes to Yada. Where he transfers everything he knows that man can handle into man during the knowing session or the worship session. And before this occasion, he would bring animals. And he said, what do you call that? And when he says, uh, a lion, God said, mm -hmm. that's what we call them in heaven. Next day, he brings a goat. He said, yes, that's what we call them in heaven. Because go, uh, God made Adam in his own image and likeness, which knew, means that Adam was bright. He was intelligent. He was perceptive. Anything God could think, Adam would think it. Come on, give God a praise for that. And watch this. God brings the woman to the man. Or, more correctly, the female in a body form. That's female. Walking upright on two legs as opposed to all other animals. That were hunched over on four. Her body smooth. Not hairy. Something about her. If there was ever a perfect body. It was hers. Now if I call out some numbers. I will have problems. But what you think is perfect, sometimes it's, sometimes it's, and, <laughs> and sometimes it's just, <laughs> tell your neighbor, once you're alive, you have a chance. <laughs> ah, walk away, Vivian. Walk away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, God originals, God's original plan was I'm making this man a helper because he's not getting full marks. I, I want to give him some lessons on how to perform his function. So I'm making him a helper. But I'm not going back to the dirt. So that when I make her, she will not be independent of him. She's connected to him. He is connected to her because he, he, he gave her her DNA so he cannot be independent of her either. I really want to, want to catch it because you are going to have to deal with twins who have become one in marriage. And are now going to become one in anointing and office. There are people who cannot handle that. And may I tell you, in Nakiva, I have a whole chapter on who gives Nakiva, the female minister, the most trouble. It's her sisters. Men will more quickly, readily accept Apostle Sandra. Is L-A boy or T-A? L-A. J. Oh, yeah, yeah. Apostle Sandra J-A. Holford. Than females. Because females begin to see a mirror image of themselves. What happens? She can tell me what to do. Everything she have, I have. No. Disrespect for leadership. But when you see he's not here, me and taking no orders from she, you know. But then when he's not here, you don't be here either. Stay home. Because you'll be sitting in the house. Because they two are one. Come on, give God a praise. And herein lies the problem. Adam looks at her and says of her now, you are bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And here the rational extended. Because you are bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh and you look different from all other females, you shall be called woman. And hear what he says. To confirm that it was two lives inside of one body because you were taken out of man. You could not have been taken out of if you weren't put into are we understanding that? If we understand that way, I'm telling you, you will have enough respect for both of them. The anointing she's now going to walk in has been embedded in her. In him, sorry. And now that she will stand side by side with the same apostolic office, what's in him is going to be transferred to her. To meet what's already in her. And there shall be an exponential increase. As long as he continues to flow, she go flow. And any day he decides he ain't flowing no more, God will God say, I'm gonna put the whole flow by she. Because God must have an apostle in his house. Listen to me. Those denominations that don't believe in apostles and prophets and revelationary teachers are missing out. Because when the hand appeared, the hand brought back the five flows that Jesus had. And it cannot be Jesus' church if these five are not there. So I don't care what denomination you belong to, you cannot... No, I, I, I thought I would get a chance to go up today, but we're not doing that. Listen to me. You cannot tell me that you are boxing with a two-finger glove. And that's why the church has been mainly, grossly ineffective. 
as powerful as, uh, what's his name, uh, Muhammad Ali was, knocking out people in a whim. I you know he's doing the acting there, and, and, and then he say, say, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, I'll knock you out in wrong number three. <laughs> and the person is fighting well uh, for no, wrong number two, wrong number, uh, wrong number one, wrong number two, and as soon as room wrong number two reaches, three reaches, the guy begins to get very discombobulated because I wonder if you're going to knock me out in true by, and then boom, I fall out. But hey, if he did not have in fact, if he had a two-finger glove, he will get his fingers broken. If he had a two-finger glove, he will, uh, he will never be able to form a fist. It's only when the thumb <laughs> See if you bring up the thumb for me. On the, um, on the PowerPoint. The one way down in the bottom. It's only when the thumb binds the other fingers together that you get a fist. So imagine you doing all the stuff that you're doing with only two fingers. But that's what religion has turned the church into. So we all over the world, but very ineffective. But then when I come to understand that not everything that calls itself church is Jesus' own, I have a little ease in my stomach. Because wherever there is a church that embraces and does not corrupt, because many have embraced it but corrupted it, and been talking about our fivefold ministry. God never said that. Form it into an exclusive club. And only certain people could reach that rank. But I want to prophesy to you. Because you have leaders who are apostolic, prophetic, evangelistic, pastoral, and teacheric. You too are teacheric. And apostolic. And prophetic. Because whatever is on the leader, it's coming down. It's about government. It's about what? If you are in any arena, you are in any geographical space, it cannot be run without governmental structure. That parish you live in is divided into smaller areas where you have what? Regional, how you call them? County, village, village councils. Who runs the villages? No, you have constituencies, national government, but every constituency has local government. What do you call the local government? You don't have, you don't have, uh, well, in Trinidad, we have 41 constituencies, but in every constituency, and sometimes stretching across, borders, you have regional offices. Because the, 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 the um, parliamentary representative taking this vast area, he cannot do parliamentary work and see about roads and cleaning rivers and maintaining bridges. So you have regional offices. Well, may I tell you, in the body of Christ, we're supposed to have the same thing. And that's why when you, when you hear there's a call for servants, for people to serve, you need to stand up and say yes. Come on, give God a praise. And may I tell you, you have to function even when other sheep are bumping you. You just come. I hear 10 years now. I move in with this church. You come here 10 months. How come you singing already? I go see to it that you get thrown out of the worship team. And you begin to sing. <laughs> Jesus. You make a job when the worship goes on. 
A person could hear you from quite down in the back. Everybody is singing, walking around these walls. Yeah, you walking around these walls. That's why they're not falling. You're going round. <laughs> now, let me ask you this question then. Do you know on your table on Sunday, you'll have many different knives? Will you use one knife for everything? You certainly won't use a steak knife for putting the steak in your mouth. That's a big mistake. <laughs> but you cannot cut the steak with the butter knife. Although both of them are called knives, each has a different function. And for that, each one is so built. And that is why in any body of Christ, what they call body of Christ or church, which I more correctly will define as denominational gathering, where they don't believe in apostle, prophet, teacher. Oh yes, they accept the intellectual academic teacher, but not the revelationary teacher. So these three are missing. That is why so many people are in such ministries possessed as ever. And all the preaching we're getting, no devil's moving. Because there must be governmental authority. The apostle is the ambassador sent by God. The ambassador is the one in charge of the embassy who delivers to the people what the king is saying. Without, without apostle, you have no governmental authority when you pray. That's why so many people are praying, getting hoarse, uh, swelling their feet, and no demons moving. Because if you don't recognize the apostleship that's over you, or if you have no apostleship at all, nothing going to change. Because you check governmental protocol, political and otherwise, you'll realize no change is made unless there's a government-to-government -government arrangement. And long before this church came into this space, there were governmental arrangements controlling it. And I'm not talking about Miss Motley and her crew. The Motley crew. And her crew. I want you to know, in this atmosphere right around here, there are governmental structures. Tailor made to block the governmental authority of God's people. And that's why in the Garden of Eden, it was really God's embassy. That's why he came down to earth in Eden to talk with man, and then he went back up. The rest of earth was controlled by Lucifer, who was now Satan. Because God will never tell Adam to guard the garden unless there was some possible invader. You don't guard that which will never be invaded. And you, you, people only invade what's valuable. What was the value set on Eden? The value set on Eden was what? Inside of here are two people who are koinonia with God. And every day they get stronger. And Lucifer got, oh no, Satan, he got jealous. Because that's what used to happen with him. He used to go up to heaven. Do the worship. Come back to earth. Go and check. Go and check Isaiah 14. It says, I will ascend. You don't ascend to where you already are. You go from below to up. And this time, he said, when I go up there, I like how God rides on the worship. He said, you know what? I'm going to carry my throne up there and put my throne upon God's throne. And when I, I lead the worship, and I go, hold up, hold up. And I tell all the heavenly voices to go, hold up. God's throne going to rise because God rides on the worship. That's why if you come to church after worship, 
God can ride home with you. Because he rides on your worship, not the worship singer's worship. It's your worship you want. You only come here for them to stimulate you to worship. That's why when the singing is finished and, 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 and man of God says, come, let's speak in tongues. And you stand up there with your mouth. God ain't going home with you because there's no welcome in your home. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you must be able to bust the tongues just so. Just like how I'm doing it now. Rabashanda. Come, come, come. Bust the tongues, bust the tongues. Rebendeki Rabashundo. Last thing. Did I say last thing? <laughs> and last thing. Wherever a church is situated, located, it will have to contend with warlords. And the warlords understand governmental authority more than we, the church, knows. And that's why we praise, we pray and get slapped up. We fast and get sick because we don't understand governmental authority. The hand of God representing the five streams of anointing that Jesus has but which he has given us gifts represent the governmental authority that must run anything that claims to be Jesus is so. And I give God praise for you accepting the fact that your leaders are going to be operating at the highest level of governmental authority in the earth, which is the apostolic. Come on, give God a praise. The office of the apostle. And now it's both of them. Just like Zachar and the Kiva making up Adam. What some things happen in this church in the next year that you, you, you wish you had in the, in the last 20? Because no, there's proper government being set up. And may I tell you, built into the apostle. Is his anointing, her anointing to feed prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, whichever order. Do you know the thumb is the only finger that touches all? Who will govern the prophets? Apostles. Who will govern the pastors? Apostles. Who will govern the evangelists? Apostles. Who will govern the teachers, the apostles? What are the streams that are supposed to flow through an apostle? Since he is the representation of Jesus in any embassy called Jesus' church, he must also be a prophet. Because a non-prophet can't teach a prophet. He must also be a pastor. Because non-pastors cannot mentor other pastors. He must be a soul winner, an evangelist. Uh, oh, and let me drop something about evangelists. Because the church has over its overall leadership, the king, supreme, king of kings and lord of lords, who, by way of definition and practice, seeks to express expand his territory, evangelism becomes necessary. Prime ministers guard their borders. Kings go beyond their borders to annex other countries. That's why every one of those nations that came down to the Caribbean with colonies, they had a king over them. Check it out. 
Because kings are not satisfied to be confined in a space. They look for more territory. That is why the growth of this church will now take a whole next level of passion. Evangelism will take on a whole new level of passion. Because now you have a double anointing in the apostolic that's going to feed you to create a passion for souls. Are you hearing me? Did I say last thing? Last thing. Hear this. We're finishing now. It means then that everybody in this house is now doubly apostolic. If your leaders are apostolic, it's a trickle-down anointing. Can I prove it to you? Watch this. You see the hand there? Watch my hand. Do you know the real strength of the palm of a hand is the wrist? Talk to Serena Williams. Talk to Brian Lara. When guys like, uh, was the big Joel Garner and Walsh trying to hit a four with brute strength? And the ball dropping right by the two. Watch Brian Lara and Gary Sobers. And watch the fieldsman running. Can't catch the ball. Because he has understood that the strength of the palm is the wrist. Do you hear what the scripture says? That God has given apostles... Prophets, pastors, teachers, or evangelists, whichever order. For the what? Perfecting of the. Perfecting of the who? So the people who have turned this, because they now grasp it, into a club called Fivefold Ministries, wrong like a ball rolling down a hill. They're wrong. Because God says there is an end, a ministerial end to these five offices. It's the perfecting of the, the perfecting of the, where are the saints located? Right here in the wrist. Do you realize the hand is made up of furrows like little rivers? Attached to many of the fingers, wherever the, it, it, there's a flow from these five, it's flowing down to the saints. Which tells me the real apostolic, prophetic, uh, pastoral, teacheric, evangelistic work to be done is not with both of them. Their strength is in the people. You heard what I just said? Their strength, the strength of this ministry, the authority of the ministry is in them. But the strength is in the wrist. It's in the people. Don't have time to go through everything. But no basketball coach thinks he could win a game with the five stars. He'll get beaten by, by, by um, half time. He can't catch up. But there are seven other men dressed up in the same uniform who when there's a break, he call a timeout. All of them leave the bench and they stand over the coach looking at the move because you never know when the coach will call you. You never see any of those guys standing in a corner. And when it's time for strategy, hey, some of them, all they do is lift a towel and swing it. 
their function is to raise the, the ante of the support. And there are some people that's the anointing to get people all, all enthusiastic about the vision of the church. But everyone who sits on that bench has an expertise. And when the, 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 the game reaches a critical point, we need four points. But the star boys, their wrists are tired. What happens? The coach turns to his three-pointer expert who is on the bench. He hasn't played for the whole 48 minutes. He says, you, come. And sets him in a position where when that ball is thrown, he says, just catch and shoot. He don't have a problem with the ball dropping short because whole game, he has kept his hands supple. Ain't do a thing yet, but it's supple. I call the wrist and the people of God who don't walk in these offices the sixth man. That's what they call them in basketball. The sixth man. Five streams but all flowing to strengthen the bigger body of God. Till we all come into the what? Unity of the faith. For the what? Work of ministry. Churches don't get filled just because you have an apostle. It's because of the people. The sixth man. Understanding function. You may not have office, but your function is to bring a soul with you. On your 20th anniversary, I'm saying to you, God is shifting things at the top. Therefore, he expects everyone, like in the army, on the parade square, to find the right marker and shuffle. Until where you are standing, you could see his chin. Your right markers are here. What did I just say? And you have to shuffle into space. Adjust your mindset. You're going to have to drop the term pasta from Sandra. And call her by her new designation. I got a custom since last year. I, I call her apostle. You're going to have to get accustomed to calling her Apostle Sandra. Come on, give God a praise. Because one law of life is this. You get from a person what you need based on how you see. That person. If you see as just a woman, that's what you're going to get. If you see her and you cannot uh, wrap your mind uh, beyond seeing her as pastor, that's all you're going to get from her pastoral direction. But if you open up your mind and you accept apostle, then governmental authority is going to come upon you every time she lays hands on you. And you'll go out there and exercise governmental authority backed up by heaven through the ambassadors. Come and give God a praise. Those who are into intercessory and you're assigned to pray for her and him, you can't be bigging him up in heaven and diminishing her. Because you're setting yourself up for major defeats. When you get a chance, check Luke chapter 9. Jesus sends out his 12 disciples. <laughs> Blows on them. 
They go to do miracle signs, wonders. They come back and talk to him. But in chapter 10 now, it says, and he sent out another 70. Chapter 9 presupposes that the 12 are apostles. His apostles. But chapter 10 says straight up, they have no titles. But they have function. And he sends them out with no title. But they come back with the same reports. Like the apostles. But they could never have assumed that they were apostles. They were apostolic. By anointing. And function. But they didn't have the title as yet. Maybe later on they became that. Whoever says today is not for apostles, then answer me why today is for pastors and evangelists. Where in the Bible you saw, it says, after a while, these three will fade away and these two will come forth. Nowhere. We are about to release this lady. A lady indeed. But I have news for you. <laughs> I, I, I sense in her. A soul there's anointing. What you will get away with with him. <laughs> you will not get away. Because she has two functions mainly to guard him and to guard the house. You threaten him, she will pick it up. I'm praying for her now. And I'm decreeing God will give her a screen, a movie screen. Marked MDM. New Dimension Ministries. And every nonsensical stupidness that you let people suck you into, I prophesy, God will show her it with your name and your picture, your photo on that screen. I prophesy, you gossip on her, she will hear you. When the Lord called us and everybody was, uh, who's supposed to support us in the team, was, I mean, we grew from 150 to 35 in one night. And I say grew and I'm not being facetious because those were the strong ones. And then it whittled down to 18. And once we were having a meeting in, at our house, and suddenly God opened up a picture for me and showed me all who were in another house across the town bad talking us. And I began to hear them and I saw what color they were wearing. And when we went to church the next time, I asked them straight up, so you were in so and so? How do you know that? I say, I'm a prophet. So they became very, very guarded in how they began to speak about me and Apostle Jeremy. 